Yes, Benjamin Franklin did fly a kite in a storm, but no, he was never struck by lightning and he did not discover electricity. In fact, he wasn't even the first person to prove that lightning was electric. That was done a month before Franklin's kite experiment by a Frenchman to humiliate a rival. Wait, how can an electrical experiment humiliate anyone? And how did it work without getting struck by lightning? And why is Franklin's kite experiment famous instead of Dalibard's tent experiment in France? Well, I'll tell you. And along the way, I'll talk about the invention of the lightning rod, death by lightning strike, and how an experiment in France helped America win the American Revolution. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. This story begins with a long-standing rivalry in France between Jean-Antoine Abbé Nollet and a man named, ready for it? Georges-Louis Leclerc, the Comte de Buffon. Abbé Nollet was an old-school religious scientist. Abbé is French for friar, who is famous for his shocking experiments and for introducing the Leyden jar to France. He was deeply offended by the philosophies of the Enlightenment, especially its push for religious freedom and its acceptance of atheism. Buffon was a leader of the French Enlightenment, along with his friends Voltaire and Diderot. He was a naturalist studying plants and animals who wrote a 36-book series on natural history that was read by every educated person in Europe. As expected, Nollet and his religious friends did not like Buffon's books, saying they were revolting and that they encouraged atheism, materialism, hedonism, and bad science. This leads us to Benjamin Franklin. Franklin had decided to publish his letters to a friend about electricity as a book. In the book, Franklin proposed this radical idea that we still believe today, that everything contains charges, and when you rub things, you're not creating electricity, you're only moving the charges, which he called positive charges and negative charges. This was contrary to the prevailing theory made by Nollet's former mentor, that when you rubbed a glass object, you created glass-like electricity, and when you rubbed a wax-like object, you created wax-like electricity. Therefore, Franklin wisely decided that Nollet would not be very receptive to his new ideas. So instead of sending his book to Nollet, France's leading expert in electricity, he instead sent his book to Buffon. Buffon was delighted to get the book. Now, he had no interest in electricity, but he was very invested in humiliating Nollet. Therefore, he asked his friend Thomas Dalibar to translate Franklin's book into French, even though Dalibar was also a naturalist and had no knowledge of electricity either, and hired an electricity performer to demonstrate Franklin's experiments to the king. Nollet, as expected, was furious. Quote, Mr. Buffon is the promoter of the whole business. He does not appear openly himself because he knows too little about the subject. He hires tradesmen in his service who take care of everything. Nollet even wondered if Franklin was a real person or might have just been invented whole cloth by his enemies to attack him. The king was highly impressed with the Philadelphia experiments and Dalibar and Buffon wondered if Franklin's book had any other tricks they could perform. Therefore, they decided to attempt Franklin's lightning experiment. See, in the book, Franklin had written that he thought lightning was the same as the sparks he got in his laboratory. He came up with a terrifying experiment that he called the sentry box, or the guardhouse experiment, to prove that lightning clouds were electrified. You put a large metal pole with a kink in it in a house on an insulating stand. When a storm cloud passes nearby, the charges in the pole will move by induction or moving charges at a distance, and one could get sparks from the kink in the pole. Franklin was planning on trying this experiment by putting a pole in a church steeple, but construction on the church was going slowly, so he hadn't yet attempted it. Therefore, Dalibar put a large metal pole on an insulating stand sticking out of a tent near his country house in the town of marly la ville around 15 miles from Paris. At 2 p.m. on Wednesday, May 10th, 1752, a storm passed through. Now, Dalibar was unfortunately in Paris, but he retained the services of a retired soldier who managed to get a couple of good sparks from the pole. Even the local priest joined in the fun and got some good sparks too. Dalibar wrote to the Paris Academy that lightning is incontestably 
the same as that of electricity. The idea which Mr. Franklin had of this ceases to be conjecture. It is now a reality. Nolet objected to the experiment, said it needed to be done by qualified electricians. He therefore challenged every physicist in Europe to recreate the experiment, up to and including poor Mr. Nolet, dying of chagrin of it all, as Mr. Buffon gallantly put it. As their main purpose was to humiliate Nolet, not to understand electricity, every time they succeeded in the experiment, they remarked on the brilliance of Mr. Franklin and his Philadelphia experiment. Soon Franklin became the toast of Paris. Therefore, when Franklin went to France to try to get money and arms for the American Revolution, he arrived as a superstar. After such an unprecedented success and humiliation, Buffon went back to his natural history studies, never to discuss electricity again. Dalibar too gave up on electricity after giving himself too many shocks. Although he often wrote Franklin, they became good friends, and he helped Franklin gain arms for the American Revolution. Meanwhile, Franklin wrote that he heard of the success of the Philadelphia experiment in Europe, and that he had had similar success in a different and more easy manner with a kite. Here's the famous Franklin kite experiment. Franklin made a silk kite with a sharp wire sticking out of the top of it. He then used a line of wire and twine that was tied to a metal key. Finally, he had a bit of silk rope between his hand and the key. Even though the kite was flown in the rain, the person and the silk rope and the key were under a doorway or porch and kept dry so that no electricity would flow to the person holding the kite. Notice that just like the previous experiment, this experiment works without the kite being struck by lightning. The idea is if the clouds are electrified, then the wire and key will be electrified too. Franklin found that sparks stream out plentifully from the key on the approach of your knuckle, and the sameness of electrical matter with that of lightning is completely demonstrated. Many people erroneously thought that Franklin's kite was hit by lightning instead of flying on a stormy day without getting hit. Thinking that the kite was hit by lightning has caused many, many, many people to mistakenly think that Franklin didn't do the experiment at all. If it was a fake, it was an odd one. Franklin never denied that he did his experiment after the French one. He also had no history of lying about science or not taking it seriously or honestly, and he had no idea that the kite experiment would hit such a nerve in popular culture. Just because it's possible to fly a kite in a storm doesn't mean it isn't dangerous. In fact, the following year, a man in St. Petersburg was playing with a sentry box experiment when it was struck by lightning and was killed. So Benjamin Franklin was very lucky to have survived his experiment. The fact that you could get sparks from an iron rod due to a distant thundercloud gave many people, including Benjamin Franklin, the mistaken impression that they were actually draining the electricity from the lightning cloud. Therefore, they thought if they just took the rod and put it straight into the ground, they could prevent lightning strikes from happening in the first place. They also correctly figured out that if the lightning strike did hit the metal bar, the electricity would safely flow into the ground without causing mischief, as Franklin would put it. Thus, the lightning rod was born. Surprisingly, a simple piece of metal sticking out of buildings and connected to the ground is still used to protect us from lightning strikes to this very day. In the mid-1700s, however, it terrified and offended people. And that strange story is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you want to know about how Ben Franklin discovered about electricity and figured out the positive and negative charges. Please check out my previous video, How Benjamin Franklin Discovered Electricity. Also check out my next one about the lightning rod. It's gonna be a good one. You should also subscribe to my YouTube channel called Kathy Loves Physics, or join my Facebook page, also called Kathy Loves Physics. Or maybe join both. Why not? All the cool kids are doing it. Thanks and have a good day.